Hey guys, Laura Whitmore here, owner of Strategic Test Prep. And in this video today, I'm going to cover the do's and don'ts of the digital SAT. Because let's face it, it's a brand new test. Nobody has any idea what's going on. And after the last video that I made, which was the first one in my digital SAT series, you guys asked a ton of really good questions that I wanted to address in my next video. So hopefully you find this information useful. I'm sure you will. Make sure you click the subscribe button below so you don't miss out on anything in this series to make sure you are fully prepared and confident and ready to embark on a brand new test that no one has taken yet. All right, so number one is a don't. Don't throw out your SAT prep book. So if you have that big blue college board book with all those questions in it for the paper test, please do not burn it. Do not throw it away. Don't um, you know recycle it, whatever. Like you still have tons of questions that you can use and prep from in there because it's kind of limited right now. The digital SAT, they came out with four practice tests in Blue Book exams, and you can, you know, get like a few questions on Khan Academy's app. But, you know, there's a lot of questions that they've recycled for the English portions, even though they've completely redesigned the English section. There's word and context questions that you can go through in the book. Transition questions is huge. You should definitely practice those that you see in the writing section in the book. And the math is pretty consistent. So the math um, is going to have a lot of the same concepts that they're testing on the digital version. So you could go through all the math sections in the book if you wanted to. However, I have a tip for you guys. They have changed the math year over year slightly. So they'll fold in new concepts and get rid of um, concepts that they were testing for a while. For example, they like to test uh, imaginary numbers back in the day, but now they actually really don't test imaginary numbers anymore. So for that reason, I would suggest if you wanna go to some paper tests to practice from, start with the newest tests that were released like this past year. You can Google search uh, March 2022 QAS, May 2022 QAS. Really any QAS report means that the test was released to the public. So if you do the latest and greatest tests, the newest ones, they're gonna have the newest concepts in them. And those I've noticed are more on the digital SAT. Okay, number two, it's a do. Do bring your laptop if you have one. So College Board says that you know you can bring your own laptop or they will provide one for you. I mean, guys, if you have your own laptop, bring what you're comfortable using. I'm a Mac person, so when you hand me a PC, I, I swear I feel like an 85-year-old grandma trying to figure it out. No offense to you grandmas out there, sorry, but you guys know what I mean. So you wanna make sure that you've got your own device. And listen, if you don't have a laptop, that's okay. They'll give you one, so no big deal. I don't wanna stress you out if you don't have a laptop. But if you do, I think it'll be to your benefit to work out of that one. A couple things with that though, make sure it's fully charged, you know, so leave it on the charger overnight because College Board says it will save your progress if your battery dies during the test. But then it's just gonna be stressful for you. They'll have to give you another computer. You'll have to reboot. You already have lost some time potentially. I wouldn't even go there. So make sure your laptop's fully charged. And also make sure that you've downloaded the Blue Book Exams app, okay? You wanna download that before you get into the test. Because if you wait, then they say that the proctors may allow you to do it the morning of, but that's kind of like open for interpretation. What does may allow you to mean? Will some of them decide not to? You don't wanna be stressed out about that either. So just be completely prepared, fully charged, app already downloaded. Now I'm assuming it's the Blue Book Exams app that you need because I went into the app and it shows practice tests, but then it also shows tests that you're registered for. So I'm thinking you'll take the tests in that app as well. But when you register for the digital SAT, I'm sure they'll send you emails with more instructions and then we'll know for sure if it's the Blue Book Exams app or another app. Okay, number three is a don't. Don't use the on-screen calculator provided. And this goes along with rule number two, which I talked about the laptops. You wanna have your own calculator that you're comfortable with. I don't know if any of you guys ever used a Desmos calculator, but I swear I'm fumbling around trying to find the buttons and it's just gonna waste valuable time for you. Bring your own TI-84, bring what you know um, where the buttons are at and just go with that. Now, obviously make sure you've got uh, batteries in it that are new and that aren't about to die. Um, but yeah, definitely bring your own calculator. Okay, number four is a do. Do bring a pencil. You actually can bring a pencil or a pen because they're gonna give you scrap paper, which is really nice. 
So I would definitely recommend you write out your math work on scrap paper. There's really not the functionality for you to write out your math work on the screen. And who wants to do that? It's super annoying and hard to do. So you can just show all your work. That way you won't make any careless mistakes. They even say that you can bring a pen, which is kind of crazy to me. And I know some of you guys out there do math and pen. Why? Why are you doing math and pen? As a former math teacher, that drives me crazy. I mean, you can make careless mistakes and what you can erase and okay i'm getting stressed out just thinking about it right now but anyways bring your own utensil and just plan on doing some work on scrap paper okay number five is a big one it's a don't don't leave the clock up on your screen unless you want to torture yourself i would recommend using the hide feature so there's a button right under the clock you just click it and the clock will go away why would you want to see a clock counting down psychologically it is going to mess with you it's going to stress you out so maybe set a boundary with yourself. I would recommend like every 10 questions or so, checking the clock to see how you're doing with your pacing, but definitely hide the clock, guys. All right, number six is a do. Do flag questions for review. I am so glad the Digital SAT has this feature. This is something that I recommend to my students who take the paper-based test. If you're not 100% confident on a question, you should be marking it to come back to. So if you're ever iffy or not sure, you click this little button, it makes a red flag. And then when you're done with the entire section, all the questions will pop up and it will show you which ones you need to go back and review. So you can go back and double check them, change your answer. There's something to be said about going back to a question later with extra time. The pressure is off. You have more of a clear head. You're less worried about not finishing. And sometimes you have those aha light bulb moments where it's like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? I mean, the answer is definitely D. Why was I thinking it was B? So definitely flag questions for review and definitely go back. All right, number seven is a don't. Don't ignore the option to take the ACT. So if you guys are international, you can take the ACT paper-based test too. Maybe you don't vibe with the digital test. So I would definitely look into doing the ACT. I think I'll make a future video on the differences between the digital SAT and the ACT. So based on what type of student you are, you can have a better idea of which one you should take. But definitely don't rule out the ACT because you want to give yourself enough options and get the best score possible to submit to schools. Okay, number eight is a do. So do take more than one test. You can super score the digital test, probably. Um, that really is up to colleges. About 75% of colleges in the US do super score. So I would definitely recommend you plan on taking more than one digital SAT. And what's really nice is the digital SAT will release your score within days instead of weeks. So you won't lose momentum. You can pick up right where you left off, go through your questions, see which ones you missed, modify, learn from your mistakes, and then just keep prepping to get ready for the next test. Okay, number nine is a don't. Don't expect colleges to be willing to super score a paper-based score with a digital SAT score. Unfortunately, there are too many variations between the two tests, although they're both on a scale out of 1600, that it's very unlikely that schools will be willing to do that. And I've done some research and that's what everybody's saying. But again, it's up to the colleges themselves whether or not they're willing to do it. It's not a college board or an SAT decision. So let's say you have your heart dead set on a school and you want to know if they'll super score your two different tests. I would just call the admissions office and ask. You know, it doesn't hurt to just put it out there and say, hey, listen, I took the paper test and then I took the digital. Can we can we put those two scores together? All right. Last but not least, number 10 is a do. Do know how the scoring algorithm works. You can't get good at a sport. You can't get good at playing a game if you don't know how the game is scored. So the same goes with the SAT. So my last video goes over how this new digital SAT scoring algorithm works. I'm gonna link it up here right now. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely check that out. Because guys, if you don't know how the test is scored, you're not gonna know how to play the game. So yeah, anyways, those are my 10 do's and don'ts for the digital SAT. I'm so grateful to be able to help you guys as we embark on this new journey in this unknown territory together. Um, definitely make sure you subscribe and I will see you guys again soon. Happy prepping.